continuing the series Son of David this morning for Passover season. And we're going to take of the blood and of the bread together as a church today. The covenant of communion. Anytime the word blood is mentioned in scripture, you should write above it with your ink pen or your notepad on your phone, covenant. Because the blood represents the covenant. You are saved because blood was shed for you on Calvary years ago. And the Lord God Almighty created a covenant through his son so that we may have life and have it to the abundance. And we celebrate Jesus in this season. The ritual of taking communion is far more than a ritual. It's our pathway to God's presence. It's our highway to his healing. Many have referred to communion as the meal that heals. It is our roadway to rejoicing. It is to be taken during times of difficulty and disease. Jesus instituted hope in the midst of struggle. His life was under attack. His ministry was under attack. He was being betrayed by his friends. He was facing extreme pain and sadness, but remained faithful to observe the Passover. And to the new covenant, he was born to implement. I'm thankful for the new covenant of God's grace. I'm thankful that Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. He is and was and will always be the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, the one that saves people, sets people free, gives them hope and a future. I would rather be in a Catholic or Greek Orthodox church where communion means something and is taken seriously than I would be in an evangelical church that rushes through it as a ritual. Because I still believe in the blood. I still believe in the body of Christ. I still believe he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Some of you need healing. Just receive it by way of the Spirit today. As we move towards the Last Supper in Scripture, there's so much going on with the Son of David and his followers. First, he observes a widow giving an offering out of her poverty. Then he talks to his disciples about false prophets and says, don't go after them. He predicts that the temple will be destroyed, but that a new temple, he himself, will be brought to the forefront. Scripture say, but when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be afraid, for these things must come to pass first. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes, famines, pestilences, fearful sounds, sights, and signs from heaven. He tells his followers that they will be persecuted, hated, betrayed, but they will endure. Christians, can I remind you this morning that they hate you because you're doing something that is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And Jesus told us we would have haters. He told us we would be betrayed. He told us we would be under great persecution during the end of days. Shortly after Judas plots to betray his Savior, the one that gave him an opportunity, that affirmed him, that called him, he plots to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. And in Luke 22, beginning with verse 7, it says, Then the day of unleavened bread came when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat of it. Passover remembers the deliverance of Israel from the bondage of Pharaoh and the Egyptian. This was a prophetic picture of redemption. God brought judgment to the Egyptians through the ten plagues. And the final one was the death of the firstborn. There's always been a war for what happens in the womb. 
After an abundance of grace, Yahweh had had enough and instructed Moses and Aaron to speak to the people of Israel. He said, get a lamb without blemish, a male of the first year. It should be sacrificed on the 14th day at twilight. Sprinkle some blood on your doorpost and the death angel will pass over you. Go ahead and eat the meat roasted in fire, the unleavened bread, the bitter herbs. We call it a Seder feast. God told them what to do, when to do it, how to do it and why they were supposed to do it. This is called the Feast of Passover. We will be hosting a Seder feast very soon if you've never been a part of one. I taught on the Seder feast on television today around the world. I encourage you to be a part of it. We don't have to celebrate Passover. We get to under grace. And if you've never experienced it, you should. The bowl of water there at the Passover meal represents the tears that were shed from our ancestors during the 430 years they were in slavery. The bitter salad has to do with the bitter experiences they faced and the whippings they took under slavery. The fruit, the paste with the cinnamon sticks represented the brick and mortar that our forefathers stacked on top of building after building as they were slaves to the Egyptians and they built their cities. The four cups of wine, and I don't have time this morning, but I've preached it to you before. I can show you the four places where blood was shed in the Bible that represents the four cups of wine, and I believe the final one we'll get to drink with our Savior according to the word when he comes back for us, amen? The garden, Gethsemane, Golgotha, and glory. They said to Jesus when he was being crucified, he said, I thirst, and but he would not drink the wine because... It's not finished just yet. It is prophetically, but Jesus, my friend, is coming back on the scene. And I am ready for him to. The afikoman was the broken piece of matzah bread that was set aside earlier and to be enjoyed at the end of the meal. The spotless lamb is Jesus. It's a picture of our spotless lamb. And the blood was a picture of his blood that would be shed for us. Exodus chapter 11. Now the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So Jesus was celebrating the Passover feast with his disciples, but in the midst of it, he implemented a new covenant that we will share with one another today. He says in Luke 22, where do you want us to prepare for the Passover? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room there, make ready. So they went and found it. And if you're going with me in May, you're going to get to sing and pray in that same place, the upper room. So they went and found it, just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with, fervor, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. Gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So it's no longer about rules and rituals. It is by grace we've been saved. And Jesus, the spotless lamb, our Passover, our great high priest, he implemented a new covenant that all 
could partake in, every race, every socioeconomic class. We can all take of the blood and the bread, those of us that know Jesus as our personal Savior. It's more than simply just a ritual. It's more than just a meal of remembrance. It's a covenant with God. It's something that we must take serious every time we put the bread to our lips and the blood to our lips. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 speaks of how we should partake in this meal. And I just want to lead you down this road briefly before we take of the elements together. First and foremost, there is a biblical preparation required of us. As I taught you, Jesus is the fulfillment of Passover. He was doing a new thing. In Matthew 5, 17, Jesus would say, Do not think I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, which means to overthrow or put an end to, but to fulfill. Amen? So yesterday is never supposed to be in competition with tomorrow. God is doing a new thing. Everything is connected by way of his spirit. There is never supposed to be competing agendas in God's kingdom. It is the new thing that Jesus is doing because of his sacrifice that we have the freedom. Ephesians chapter 2 says, For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man, one new human race, one form of government out of the two, thus making shalom peace. He's a God of peace. He's a God of bringing people together. But it says in Paul's letter to the Corinthians that we must be prepared to take of this bread and this blood. It says before we receive the elements, we must be prepared for it. It says whoever eats bread or drinks of this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it goes through each and every thing that you must put your heart through before you take of the elements. The first thing we learn is that we should examine our hearts. So if you have the ability to just look inside of yourself this morning and ask yourself, number one, am I a Christian? If I died today, would I spend an eternity in heaven with Jesus or would I go to the other place, Hades? Now, you don't have to go there. Jesus came so that no one would go to hell, but you must accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. So as you look inside, you must first find out, am I a believer? Do I have the faith that Jesus Christ did what he said he would and will come back for his people? Also, do you have any bitterness in your heart? Any anger, unforgiveness, slander, all of those things. Do you have aught with your brother? If so, there should be a reconciliation. Examine your heart to find out if Jesus is the Lord of your life. Examine your relationships. Find out if you have divisions among you. 1 Corinthians 11 talks about differences and divisions. The Bible teaches us that if we have something against a fellow believer, that we shouldn't even bring our offering or offer up our prayers because they will not be received if we have anger in our hearts towards a fellow brother or a fellow Christian. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, it says, And there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, then come offer your gift. So maybe the reason why there's a ceiling on the favor of God, there's you have a ceiling above you, is because you have held on to bitterness and anger for far too long. Can I challenge you in one area this morning, Abbas House? Forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you agree with what they did to you. 
Forgiveness doesn't mean you agree with what they said about you. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you approve of whatever they put you through. Forgiveness is simply saying, I'm a child of the king and I've been forgiven, so I must give them the gift of forgiveness. And when you forgive your brother, you take them off your hook and put them on God's hook. And I can promise you, they don't want to be a hindrance to something God is doing. God will deal with people in time that are a hindrance to his work. May not happen when we want it to because he's a gracious God. But trust me, I've seen it time and time again. The person that's unrepentant that goes on hurting people and hurting the move of God, eventually there is a reckoning. So we examine our heart. We evaluate our relationships. But when we take of the blood and the bread, we need to experience joy and gladness. We need to enjoy the work of our Savior. I mean, when we take communion, for those of us that know him, it's, it's a celebration of life. It's a celebration of grace. The fact that you were once lost, but now you've been found. Once blind, but now you can see. Once you were on the wrong path, and now God's put you on a new path. You are a new creation, so we celebrate the work of Jesus as we take of the elements. But as I always say to you, when we take of the elements, or when we take offering, or when we worship, we should expect a miracle, amen? amen. We should expect a miracle. Genuine expectation leads to divine manifestation. You're going to have what you expect to have. Expect a harvest. Expect a turnaround in 24 hours. Expect a promotion. Expect a blessing. Expect a harvest. Expect the best that God has to offer in his word. Amen. Grab that word, claim a promise, and believe God for it. Psalm 91 verse 16 says, With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So there's a biblical preparation required of us. Number two, a spiritual significance revealed to us. Jesus revealed himself during the Last Supper. He revealed who he was, what he was going to do, what he was about. He is our Passover lamb. In John 1.29, he was the spotless lamb. The unleavened bread represents a body in perfect unity that is void of leaven, sin. That's Jesus. He is the bread of life, John chapter 6. When we eat of the Passover lamb, it was revelation of our need for nourishment. Well, Jesus is the bread of life. He said, for those thirsty, if any man thirst, what? Let him come unto me and drink. Our Savior shed his blood and painted it on the doorpost of our hearts and humanity so that all might live free and fully alive. In him we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins, for it is by grace we've been saved. You know, in ancient times, there was so much sin in the world that God sent a flood and decided to restore Humanity, through Noah and his family, he decided to just save a remnant of people and animals so that the world would live. And what are the means by which he did this? Well, the Bible says that Noah built this ark of wood, gopher's wood, and it was pitched with a pitch, which means when El Elohim, the creator, looked down and saw his remnant, his last true family, and all those animals, he looked down at a red soaked vessel of wood. But 2,000 years later, El Elohim looked down at his son on a red soaked tree, soaked with his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Never underestimate the power of the blood that goes on cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Never underestimate, according to Ezekiel, that there is life in the blood. 
that it brings life. And yes, this gospel is a dirty gospel, but it's been made clean by the blood. Amen? And I'm so grateful for that. Communion is tied to the Lord's death and the kingdom he left us, the kingdom he will come back to reign over. He said to them in verse 15 of Luke 22, with fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now I close here. Communion, this covenant of communion is a prophetic fulfillment remembered by us. He said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In 1 Corinthians, it would say in chapter 11, verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we're to do this today in remembrance of Jesus. Remember how God liberated Israel from Egyptian slavery. Remember how Jesus liberated you from the curse of sin and demonic bondage. Remember how the blood of Jesus delivered you from all unrighteousness and gave you a second chance. Remember what Jesus did for you, where you were when you first found grace. Remember how the body of Christ is supposed to be one, one flesh, one new man, Jew and Gentile. Racism can't stand in the new covenant. Sin cannot survive in the new covenant. Hatred, jealousy, envy, anger cannot survive in the new covenant because we are one blood, one new man, one form of government, God's kingdom above all. So I hope that you'll not only be prepared today spiritually and biblically, but even prophetically for the elements. I believe God's going to heal some people and save some people. I would ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. I'm going to ask my deacons who are going to be helping me to go ahead and make your way to your tables today. Gentlemen, thank you for our deacons and our chairman and the great work they do. But before we take of this blood and this bread today, I just wonder if there's anybody in the house that might be unsaved. Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the gospel. It's good news that Jesus loves you and wants to give you purpose on earth and eternity in heaven. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, you're not sure if you're saved or not. You don't have to have the Bible memorized. The Bible says all you have to do is believe receive and confess so if you need Jesus in your life online or in the house the Bible says if you confess me in front of men I'll confess you in front of my father so if you need Jesus I want to give you an opportunity to make him the Lord of your life just pray this prayer with me say dear Lord Jesus Lord forgive me of my sins please come into my life and save me Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to tell someone at next steps after the service. You should sign up to be baptized the first Sunday in April. But if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, you get to maybe for the first time partake in communion with us. So welcome to the family. Let's give them a round of applause at this house for anyone that may have prayed that with us I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet today we have gluten free communion here we have uh, wine and, and crackers you can get one packet both the bread and the wine is in one singular packet so I believe Dr. Hartley said if you will exit left and return to your section to the right exit to your left return to your right there are tables in the middle you may go ahead and come and receive your elements and then we will take of the blood and the bread together this morning as we worship